Hey, what's up everybody? This is Justin Johnson and all you guitar lovers out there are gonna love what's in this uh, box. This is, well, it's a case, it's not a, it's not a box. Uh, this is the one of the newest models from Jasper Guitars. And if you've been watching my channel, which you should be, uh, you would have seen my uh, showcase I did not too long ago on their Elmore model guitar. Um, killer guitar, a lot of crazy new features, and um, that was like the solid body that sounds like an acoustic and sounds like a resonator when you plug it in. This is one of their brand new electric guitars, uh, so totally different design, some similar features, but we're gonna dive even deeper into uh, what's cool about those Jasper guitars and uh, check out this baby while we're at it. All right, so uh, let's see what's in their case. They always have such nice cases too at Jasper guitars, I love it. Let's check it out. Oh yeah. <laughs> Man, see what I mean about the nice cases? These are, I guess it's a G and G cases, but um, that is one uh, sweet looking custom case right there. Especially with the, um, you know, pretty extreme body design there. It's got some, got some really interesting shapes. So you can tell this case was made it just perfectly for this guitar. Very tight fit in there too. Well, there is one thing uh, before I take this out that I need to get out of the case. And that is something you don't normally have with a guitar, and that is the coin. What is the coin, you may ask? <laughs> Good question. Um, I'm gonna show you what this does a little bit later. All right, so I'm gonna put the coin away for a second. For now, just uh, looking at the guitar, let me tell you a few things about it, you know? One of the main things that really distinguishes Jasper guitars from other guitar companies and other guitar designs is this uh, resonator plate on the back of the guitar. And uh, we're gonna kind of dig into this here in a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna open this up and actually show you what's going on in here. It's got a patented chambered body inside. It's got um, a device too here, which you screw in using that coin. And so when you turn that, um, it actually turns a uh, kind of like a bolt that bolts into uh, the internal block in there. And that changes the tension on this carbon fiber resonator plate. And so that uh, affects the tone and it also affects the level of sustain that you get from the notes. And so it's just this whole new device that uh, Jasper Guitars, uh, you know, invented. And that is really like the, uh, the key to what makes this guitar so much different than other electrics. The coin is the key. Another feature that's kind of an extension of this uh, chambered body is a uh, vent on the end of the guitar here. So it actually uh, allows air to pass uh, in and out of that chamber inside. Another detail, just feeling it, and uh, this was the same with the Elmore model too, the other uh, Jasper guitar model that I tried. Um, it's got this really cool feature on the back of the neck to where it's a, a nice satin finish, which is really easy uh, to slide up and down. Um, but that satin finish turns into a gloss finish up at the headstock. It has kind of like a gradient here where it's smooth, uh, I mean like shiny, and then nice satiny smooth the rest of the way down the uh, back of the neck. And then uh, that's cool, on the back of the headstock, they got the uh, Deja Voodoo, <laughs> the, uh, the model back there printed. I love that font back there. Okay, so um, I don't know, should I open it up first or should I play it first? What do you think, Jackie? Well, Jackie wants me to open it up first, so let's see what this baby's got in here. All right, so uh, luckily I don't go anywhere without my uh, mobile guitar workshop. Let's break her open. All right, I got the screws off. I'm gonna use that coin and start unscrewing this bolt back here. Okay, so I've got this uh, disassembled back here. I've never actually seen inside this before, so this will be a first time for me too, but I think I know the general concept. There's the, uh, the bolt 
that bolts down into this block. And um, then there's this part, the plate. And um, good thing is if you ever lose your pick on stage, you've always got a backup. So that's good for giant guitars. The uh, carbon fiber plate back here, let's take that off. And um, there you go, you can see again, very chambered body here, um, almost like a semi-hollow. But this is uh, one of the really interesting components right here. It's a solid brass block. That is a huge block too. And it's right under that bridge. So with the hardtail guitars, what that mean, means is that the strings go through the body, then they come out the other side um, from the bridge, and then, you know, then they go down the front. But what's uh, good about a hardtail design is that because those strings go through the entire body, it transfers and kind of grounds that resonance into the body of the guitar. Now with this huge uh, brass block right here, what that does, not only does that transfer the resonance to the uh, body, uh, through that same process, but it also um, is much more resonant and heavy than uh, the normal wood. So that increases the sustain quite a bit. Now what's cool from an, an engineering standpoint with this is that you also have this carbon fiber uh, uh, soundboard, basically a resonator plate, and it kind of acts like, um, kind of like an acoustic guitar soundboard does, where um, you know pressure is put down on it because what's happening is it's not just like sitting back here, because there's this plate right here, the pick plate, and then this bolt, which bolts down into the screw that's in that brass block, not only does that resonance transfer into the solid wood, the body, but that uh, resonance also gets transferred to this back plate. This acts kind of like this back soundboard that uh, then the air comes out of the vent here. It doesn't get trapped inside. So it's this strange, totally new hybrid uh, physically of you know an acoustic guitar uh, a semi hollow body guitar a solid body guitar a resonator guitar there's all these uh, interesting uh, vibrations going on and depending on how tight you screw that in with the coin you can affect uh, the sensitivity and the give of that uh, carbon fiber soundboard on back so it's really cool stuff i've never uh, seen anything like it and it's all patented so that's you know, you can only really see it on these Jasper guitars and it's pretty cool stuff. Also, while we're back here, let's admire the uh, wiring and just see that wiring job. There's some pretty fancy stuff going on in there too. See, we got a couple grooves here coming from the pickups and those pickups go to this uh, toggle switch, which is a pretty, uh, pretty impressive toggle switch. And that's some really clean wiring too. That really looks like it's gonna last the test of time. You know, you can, you can tell they know what they're doing and uh, it's really organized. I mean, they've even got zip ties uh, tying some of these wires together. Um, looks like really good stuff. Also, they've got the wires going here. This is the output jack. They've got these wires uh, clamped down with this um, clamp right here, so they're not gonna, you know, get loose uh, from, from jumping around with a guitar or anything. And that's a really secure ground. That's uh, grounded to the uh, br uh, brass plate right here. I hate when guitars lose their ground, and a lot of times it's because guitar companies don't put a lot of work into securing the ground wires. This is really well done, and it's just built like a tank. I like seeing that. And like I said, I, um, I've already uh, checked out their Elmore model, and that's the acoustic model. And uh, the way that that one differs is that instead of having the electric guitar electronics, like the magnetic pickups and this stuff down here, um, it actually has a piezo pickup under the bridge, and it has a microphone in this chamber. And um, I was amazed at how close that actually sounded to, uh, to an acoustic guitar, the way they set it up. And it's the same internal system, though, and the same uh, resonator backplate in, uh, in the Elmore as in the uh, Deja Voodoo here. All right, so I'm going to put this baby back together, and uh, we'll uh, plug it into the big blue triamp back there and see what it sounds like. All right, I got her put back together. So I'm going to plug it in. The plug's right there in the middle of that vent back there. I'm going to pop it on the first pickup setting here, play a little bit, and just see what it sounds like. I've got it going into uh, big blue back here, the triamp, and um, got a little bit of distortion. Just going just gonna to check it out for a second, have some fun.
Yeah, I love it. It's so responsive. That's uh, one of the things that they put a lot of work into, I think, with this design, with the pickups, with the electronics, is um, not just getting sustain, which there's a ton of sustain out of this, but getting all those details, all the nuances of every, every string and every note. And um, I can already tell uh, just a great job with that. And uh, let me check out the volume knob and just see how, again, you know, I've got a little bit of, uh, a little bit of distortion on, a little bit of gain. Um, I want to see how it responds to uh, the volume changes and how that affects the tone and the output. All right, so I'm going to start out uh, full throttle uh, all the way up with the volume knob. I'm also all the way up with the tone knob, but um, I'm going to dial that volume knob back and we're going to hear the changes. back maybe like 20 percent Man, I'm blown away, you know. Um, basically, when you're lowering the volume like that, you're kind of dropping the output a little bit from the pickup to the amp. And um, I am not losing any clarity. I'm not losing any sustain. Um, the the built-in, like sometimes you can crank an amp or, or throw some overdrive on it. You get some, some of that kind of like artificial sustain, you know. It still sounds good. But this sustain really comes from the guitar, and I'm noticing that a lot. Like, you notice it in your fingers. And when you hit a string... And it just responds. It gives you what you're what you're wanting from it. You know, it just lasts a little bit longer. Cool. So now I'm just gonna play uh, and maybe change the volume a few times and see how that responds, like in the middle of phrasing. You know. such an easy volume knob. I mean, it's like, it holds position, but it's super easy to turn. You can really do volume swells uh, really nicely. So awesome, I don't know, like feels like it's not even there. All right, so again, everything's been just on this neck humbucker, and while I'm uh, while I'm there, let me try to get some of that, you know, like darker, like Clapton kind of woman tone. I'm gonna dial that tone all the way back and just get it all the way on the muddy side. Um, what a good tone knob will do is it'll still give you some definition even when you're dialed all the way back to that dark side. It's got 
that, that moany sound, you know? I'll die a little bit brighter. Yeah, so here's all the way on the treble side. And then all the way on the mellow side. Ah, oh, it's so good, it's so responsive. These are Lawler pickups also. Um, I guess they're low wound humbuckers. And uh, while I'm talking about these, you know we got a neck and a bridge pickup but there's a five-way toggle switch on this guitar. The first position here is the neck humbucker. The second position is a, a series uh, pickup uh, option. And so basically that kind of turns, turns it into one big pickup, um, gives you a totally different sound. In the middle position is kind of like your standard, uh, if it was a three-way knob, that would be like your standard middle position. That's both humbuckers engaged, but as separate pickups. Over here, um, you know, basically almost all the way to the end, but not quite, is an out of phase setting. And that's sort of like the Peter Green tone. Um, you don't get that on a lot of guitars, but um, it's got a really cool tone. And then back here is your classic uh, bridge uh, pickup position right here. So let me go through and give you a little uh, taste test of each of those pickup settings. You've heard the uh, neck pickup, but I'm just gonna start right there and uh, do a little riffage. <laughs> Now let me go to that, uh, that's gonna be the series set up right now. Oh man, it wakes it up, it brings it to life, you know, and again, that, that series wiring kind of engages both pickups um, as one. It connects the ground from one to the uh, live to the other, and it basically turns all the windings into one big pickup. And that's a really cool setting. A lot of overtones, a lot of kind of higher overtones. <laughs> compared to just the neck. The neck's a little more mellow. That series is a little more, uh, got some teeth to it. Let's go to that middle pickup uh, position. And this is both pickups um, on at the same time, standard middle position setting. So that one, you know, it's not quite as uh, punchy and, uh, and ferocious as the uh, series uh, setting, but it brings the treble side into it. So it's a little more bright than just that uh, neck pickup position. And, um, but it gives you enough body to where you have all that sustain, you have some good, um, you know, some good deep tone, but it just lightens it up and kind of keeps it in that, that good mid range there. Great for lead or rhythm on that one. So next we're gonna go to that, uh, that Peter Green tone there, that out of phase pickup. And what that does is it wires the pickups to where they're kind of half canceling each other out. And what remains is kind of what gets sent to the amp. So you get this really interesting kind of crazy tone. Um, here's, here's what it sounds like, I love it.
That's crazy. It sounds like I hit some kind of crazy pedal. I mean, the amount of overtones are uh, insane. You know, you get less of the foundational tone of the note, and you get a lot more of these strange kind of uh, overtones. Again, it sounds like an effects pedal. It's got a little nasally vibe to it. And uh, man, it sounds weird. Let me check that out with the uh, tone knob back here again. I've been going wide open on everything, but um, I think the tone knob's really gonna set that, that pickup setting off. Here's all the way bright. Dial it back. Oh man, that's nice. Warm it up a little bit. If I pick down here real close to the bridge, I get this really cool tone. It almost sounds like a wah-wah pedal with this tone knob. I love that pickup setting. Again, that's the out of phase setting there. And let's go all the way to the bridge now. I'm gonna dial that back just a hair. I always turn the tone knob back a little bit on the bridge to keep it from getting a little too trebly. such an active guitar. I mean, the amount of gain I can get from digging in compared to when I'm light on the uh, on the strings is crazy. Even without touching the volume knob, uh, you know, I could uh, play it lightly. Or dig in. blowing my mind. What a responsive guitar. That is crazy. All right, so since I'm getting so much sustain, I figured I'd pull out the slide and just hear what that sustain sounds like, um, you know, with this. This is my uh, ceramic slide, my signature slide, and uh, I just want to hit a few notes and kind of see how it's holding on to those. I remember their uh, Elmore model having some great sustain with the slide, and that had more of like a resonator tone. So let me check this out. You know, it just, it just holds on to notes for those long phrases. And these aren't like uh, heavy strings, you know. Uh, these are, these are kind of like medium gauge strings. But listen to it, uh, you know, you can really take one string and, and follow a phrase up um, just like crazy. The sustain is so good.
just holds on to that like crazy. All right, so I'm gonna give it a little clean tone and uh, see what it's like uh, with without the overdrive now. Ah, so good. Again, the touch, you know, it just picks up on those nuances. That's like the best way I can, I can explain it. It just it hits those dynamics. Um, you know, if I kept that soft, if I wanted to pick that up volume wise, It just always holds on, it's always there for you. I mean, um, it sounds great. You know, it sounds great with overdrive. It sounds great clean, really responsive. Um, I know what you're thinking. What's it sound like with backwards echo? Let's find out. Sounds good. All right, guys, so that is the Deja Voodoo from uh, Jasper Guitars, and uh, I'm loving it, man. It is seriously, I'd say overall, just uh, one of the most uh, responsive guitars I've ever played. It has some of the best sustain. Um, this uh, new technology, the new patents that they've got here, uh, works so well. I'm, I'm really, uh, I'm always curious when people come up with new designs but I'm extra impressed when someone can come up with something totally new and it really takes the guitar to the next level. So um, I love those features. Thanks for watching. While you're here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna do something a little more uh, to help support this channel and make these videos possible, make sure you check out my Patreon link in the information under this video. On Patreon, I do all kinds of cool stuff, give away unreleased music, do monthly live streams, do like uh, lesson live streams, master classes, a ton of stuff, you can check it out there. Thanks for watching guys, and see you next time. Say what? I'm gonna try to say the name again. Yeah, I do. Not so much scary. Voodoo. <laughs> and you wanna get a B-roll of me uh, just stroking the back of the neck? Hopefully not awkwardly. <laughs> All right, but but uh, but uh, but 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 but. Safety first, baby. What you? <laughs>